This comic is as Canadian as you can be as an American, don't you know? Despite his education taking place in a one-room schoolhouse in a barn, he's actually kind of smart. It's Vaughn! So, howdy folks, welcome back to Polynesia Lounge! I'm so happy to be here, I'm so happy to be here because we're here to celebrate the birthday of Arliss, also known as Mrs. Desperado, and I am the Desperado, and I'm here to start this shindig. Anyway, last year, Mrs. Desperado asked us to do, do a comedy club, to make her laugh, to do all the jokes, to make her laugh, and we must have failed because this year she's going to have us try again. So, <laughs> now everybody's been so busy writing their jokes, and not me though, because I believe in doing comedy the old-fashioned way, I steal it. I steal it, and because I'm from the Midwest, I'm from the, late, I'm from the great state of North Dakota, and in North Dakota we tell jokes in our crib, we learn how to tell jokes right off the bat, and it's a lost art in the rest of the country. One of our favorite types of jokes is we tell jokes about Oli and Lena. They are a Norwegian couple, they're farmers, most, most of the time they are, and they get into all sorts of scrapes, especially Oli. Lena's kind of his, you know, she kind of is his rudder, you know, she keeps him on the straight and narrow sometimes. And, you know, you might think this is a little bit of racist against Norwegians, but I've got to tell you, I am part Swede, so it's okay because we really think those Norwegians are a bunch of dummies. <laughs> but, but, just kidding, just kidding. We Scandinavians have a good sense of humor, and that's why we can tell these jokes. So, without further ado, I present you Oli and Lena, part two. So, Oli and Lena, they met each other in school and they were sweethearts from day one. And uh, when they got a little older, Oli took her out in the family jalopy, and went, they went they went parking, as you know, in the old days. And uh, one time, Oli's, they're sitting there spooning, and uh, Oli says, hey, Lena, why don't you get the back? She says, uh, not this time, Oli. Uh, I want to stay in front with you this time. Okay. <laughs> took a while. It took a while. Okay. So, eventually, eventually, they got married. They got married and they went on the honeymoon. And they went, they said they're going to go big time. And they went all the way to Fargo. And they went to the great Super 8 Motel. And so they're going into the Super 8, and there's all these people there. And Lena, she's a little shy. She's a little shy. She, she's got that blush on her cheeks, and she feels, figures everybody's looking at them. She's gonna, they're going to say, they're newlyweds, and you know what they're going to be doing. So she's a little shy. And she says, Oli, I'm feeling kind of bashful. Is there anything we can do so these people don't think we're newlyweds? And Oli thinks, and he says, yeah, you can carry the luggage. Uh, uh, <laughs> so, so, so they got busy. They got down to, down to business. And like nine months later, along on schedule, comes a baby. They're in the hospital. Oli's like pacing, because this is the old days. They don't, the man doesn't go into the delivery room, not in this, not in this day and age. And so anyway, he's pacing the forth, back and forth, worried, and all of a sudden the doctor comes out, finally after like 10 hours, and he says, well, Mr. Olson, I have good news and I have bad news. He says, what's the good news? And he says, well, your wife had a healthy baby boy. Well, what's the bad news? Well, it was a cesarean. He says, oh, oof -da. I thought it was going to be an Norwegian. <laughs> so, anyway, Oli and Lena, you know, they, they had a long marriage and they, had, they were together forever, but you know, once in a while they ran into a little rocky patch. And, you know, Oli was kind of an old-fashioned guy. He didn't really believe in divorce. He, instead, he went to the judge and he requested an annulment. And this was, uh, the judge says, well, this is very irregular, Mr. Olson, because you went away for two years and you have a child. I, on what grounds can you give? Can, can I give you an omen? He says, "Well, I just found out that her papa didn't have a license for that rifle." Uh, uh, I should have said shotgun. I should have said shotgun. I should have said shotgun. Anyway, anyway, but you know that's how it goes. Anyway, so Oli Junior, Oli Junior came along, and he says. And he's a curious little child, you know. He's not like Oli. He's a little bit more, a little bit more bright. 
and not like Oli Sr. anyway, and so they're sitting at the dinner table one day, and Oli says, uh, Oli Jr., that is, he says, so, uh, where did I come from? And Oli's mother, Dina, she says, well, the stork brought you. And he says, hmm, he looks kind of suspicious, and he says, well, where did Papa come from? Well, the stork brought him, too. And uh, where did Grandpa come from? Well, the stork brought him, too. And Oli Jr., and Oli Jr. says, you know, that's really weird, because... You know, three generations, we haven't had a normal childbirth. <laughs> <laughs> so, so another time, so another time, uh, Oli's boss is coming over. He had to work, he had to work jobs sometimes. You know how it is when you're fine. So he would, Oli's boss comes over, and uh, the uh, boss comes in, and he says, Hey, little shaver, what do we got, what do we got for dinner? And the kid says, I think it's buzzard. He says, buzzard? Oh, why do, you, why do you say that? He says, well, when Mom and Pop are talking, uh, Pop says, well, we might, might as well have the old buzzard and get it over with. Uh. <laughs> so, another time, another time, Lena's in the bathtub. Lena's in the bathtub, and Oli's out in the field. So, the doorbell rings, and uh, and Lena doesn't want to get out of the tub. She says, he else, who is it? And uh, he says, blind man. So she comes up without a stitch of clothes on, she opens the door, and he says, where do you want to put these blinds, lady? Oh. Uh. <laughs> so, another time, another time, I got a laugh out of that one, in fact, the other time, you know, uh, always a farmer, and he has to take stuff to market. Now, sometimes the old truck breaks down, he has to do it old-fashioned way, he gets off the wagon, and he hitches up the horse to it, he drives the, drives the wagon to town, he's, you know, riding on the bench in front, and there's one day he's going along, and he hits a rock, and the wagon overturns. And Oli gets thrown out into the pasture. And luckily he misses the cow pies and he misses a rock and he's just, he's fine. He's got a little couple bruises, but he's fine. And so Sven, this is right beside Sven's farm. Sven's his best buddy. Sven's a Swedish guy. He's, he's a little smart. So anyway, anyway, Sven comes out and he says, Hey, Oli, I see you got a little trouble there. And Oli says, yeah. He says, I'll be happy to help you get that overturned back and, and get the wheat back in the wagon. And, but it's 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 dinner time. See that's what we call back there. That's what we call the new meal. We call it dinner. So it's, it's it's dinner time. We're gonna go. You can come to my house, and uh, my wife Helga has made roast beef and potatoes, and we can have that, and it's gonna be really good. And then afterward, we'll feel all this energy to to work. Oh well, well Lena's not gonna like it. He said, Ah, oh, don't worry about it. It'll be quick. We'll just go and have some dinner. So they go and have some dinner. It was great. And they come back out. And he's, they're walking back out. And he says, well, see, that wasn't so bad. He says, oh, yeah, it was great dinner. But, oh, Lena's still going to be upset. He says, oh, you worry too much. Oh, where is Lena, by the way? She's under the wagon. <laughs> so, anyway, anyway, Oli and Sven, they're best of buddies, and they like to go fishing. They like to go fishing a lot. And uh, so... They didn't either. Either of them didn't own a boat, so they had to go out and rent it. So they go out and rent the boat. They went out on the lake, and this one day, it was a great day. They were catching all these fish. You know, they're catching the bluegill, the crappie, the uh, you know, the perch, all that good stuff, and they caught their limit. So as they're as they're um, driving the boat back to the rental place, uh, Oli says, "Gosh, I I." I think we should ought to go back next time, but I don't know how we're going to remember where that spot was. And Sven says, I got you covered, Oli. I put a big X on the side of the boat. And Oli says, Sven, you fool, that's not going to work. And Sven says, why not? He says, because we might not have the next, the same boat next time. Oh. <laughs> anyway, one, one day, Oli went to Minneapolis. Okay, he had to go to Minneapolis. And he went to see Chinatown. You, know, you didn't know the Minneapolis is Chinatown. It's about two blocks long. But, you know, oh, he'd never seen a Chinese person, so he wanted to go down there. So he's walking the streets of Chinatown, and uh, he sees this sign. Oops. Oops. Yeah, it's got to have that. Got to have that. I can't remember. Uh, and he says, it says, Ole Olson's Chinese Laundry. He says, what the heck? Now, he knows there's a lot of guys named Ole Olson, but he, he's never heard of one running a Chinese Laundry. So he goes in. And he, there's a little old Chinese man sitting behind the counter. And he says, I'd like to talk to Oli Olsen, please. And the Chinese man, man says, I am he. And he says, well, how in the heck are you named Oli Olsen? The Chinese man says, well, when I was in line at Ellis Island, the immigration official has 
Well, they were talking to a big, tall, blonde man, just like you. And they asked him his name, and he said it was Old Wilson. So, next I came, and he asked me my name, and I said, Sam Tame. So, anyway, up there, up there in the Midwest, one of the things we like to do is we like to go to auctions. You know, they don't, they don't have these rummage sales. They, they have auction where you get to buy all this good stuff on, on the cheap. And so Lena liked to go to these things. And one day she saw, sees a parrot. It's just a beautiful parrot, speaking of parrots. And uh, it had these wonderful green blue feathers. And so she starts bidding on it. And uh, somebody else is bidding on it. And it keeps going higher and higher and higher. And finally she's got up to $200 and she wins the bid. So she knows oh, he's going to be really upset about this. That's a lot of money for a bird. Mm -hmm. So she walks up to the auctioneer and she says, gosh, I hope with all this money I'm going to spend that this bird can talk. The auctioneer says, sure can. Who do you think was bidding against you the whole time? Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> Anyway, one time, and then, you know, Sven and, Sven and Oli, they not only like to go fishing in the winter, they like, no, they not only like to go in the summer, they like to go in the winter. And up there, the lake field freezes over, and this is what you do, you wait until the uh, uh, ice is really thick, and you go out and you bore a hole in the ice, and that's when you fish, ice fishing. And they have a big old drill they call an auger. So Oli and Sven, they went out in the ice, and it looks like a good spot, so they take out the auger and they're drilling a hole, and suddenly this voice comes from above, there is no fish in this under the ice, go someplace else. Oh, okay, so they go about 20 feet down <laughs> on the way, and they start to dig another, do, drill another hole. And the, the voice says again, I told you there is no fish under the ice, go someplace else. And the voice says, who is this? Is this the voice of God? He says, no, this is the ice we could hit it. <laughs> so, anyway, one day, one day Oli had a little bit too much to drink. It was, it was really late at night. He comes home, he's kind of stumbling along. And the Lutheran minister comes and, he, and he's out late for whatever reason. And he decides he's going to help Oli make sure he gets home okay. And so and Oli says, geez, thanks, thanks, Reverend. And, but could you come in for a moment? He says, why, Oli? He says, I want, I want Lena to see who I was out with. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so and when he got home, when he got home, he, uh, he immediately handed, handed Lena then this was at 2 o'clock in the morning. He immediately had Lena these two aspirin. And she, and she says, what's that for? I don't have a headache. And he says, I gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, you know, uh, Oli and Sven, they always used to kid each other. Because, you know, Oli's Norwegian and Sven is Swede. They always keep you they like, dumb, dumb Swede, dumb Norwegian. That's what these dumb Swedes do and all that stuff. And finally, Sven got a little tired of it. And he got a little heated and he says, you know, Oli, I was born a Swede, I was raised a Swede, and I'm always going to be a Swede. And Oli says, well, don't you have any aspirations? Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, one time, and it's, they're getting a little older. Oli and Lena have been married for a long time. They're getting a little older, and uh, Lena goes to the doctor. She's not feeling well. And uh, the doctor says, well, you're going to be kind of surprised, Mrs. Olson, but you are pregnant. And he says, I'm 65 years old. That's impossible. It can't be. And, and he says, whatever, whatever you think, the test never fails. The test never fails. And so she immediately calls up Oli and says, she says, Oli, you dummy. You got me pregnant. And Oli pauses for a moment and says, who's this? <laughs> another time, another time they're sitting, they were sitting watching TV, watching TV, and all of a sudden the phone rings and Oli picks it up. And he's talking to whoever's on the other end of the road, line, and he says, "How the heck should I know that's two thousand miles away?" And uh, and Lena says, "Holy, who's that?" And he says, "I don't know, but Yoker wanted to ask me if the coast was clear." Uh. <laughs> so, so anyway, but anyway, uh, it's, after all this stuff, they were together. Only and Lisa and stayed together for like. 50 years. That's a big deal. You know, that's a really big deal. They stayed together for 50 years. And the town, the town where they live, that is got a tiny little newspaper, and they're the kind that talks about everything because they don't have any news, you know. You know, somebody steals 
somebody steals a cow, and that's big news. So they sent a reporter out to the farm to see what, see what's up, to, to interview them for the anniversary. And they said, so, the reporter says, what is your secret of your long marriage? And uh, Oli says, well, we make love almost every day. And he says, really? And, uh, and Lena says, yeah, we almost made love on Monday, almost on Tuesday, almost on Wednesday, almost on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, eventually they had to move into town because they were feeling kind of old. You know, they were getting kind of old and, and decrepit. So they had to move into town like a lot of farmers have to do. And uh, so, and, and Lena was, again, not feeling very well. And she fell down on the floor, like some of you know. She fell down on the floor and she wasn't getting up. And Oli calls 911. He says, he says, I think my wife has had a heart attack. And they said, well, we'll, we'll send out an ambulance right away. Where do you live? He says, Eucalyptus Drive. And she says, can you spell it for me? And he says, uh, how about I drag her over to Oak Street and you pick her up there? <laughs> so, anyway, anyway. Um, it, but a little bit later, Oli went to the doctor and they had really bad news. They said, Oli, you got just two days to live. You got you got to go home and make make up, you know, uh, tie up all your affairs because you just got two days left. And so they go home and Oli's pretty depressed and pretty soon he smells baking and it's his favorite chocolate chip cookies. And uh, so Oli comes in the kitchen and he says, oh, Lena, it proves that you really love me. You're making my favorite cookies for me. And she says, don't touch them. They're for the funeral. <laughs> and so, so finally I'd like to leave you with Uli Olson's favorite saying about getting old. He says, you know you're getting old, but you can't remember why, and when you know all the answers, but nobody asks you the questions. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I'd like to say, Uka! 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 Give it up for Bob!